Now, basically, this is the definition that you find on the, uh, on the textbooks about what is a post-traumatic stress disorder and how it manifests, uh, all the psychological and um, uh, sort of manifestations. A lot of them fall very uh, uh, elegantly into patterns in TCM, Chinese medicine, and classical Chinese medicine that we can respond to. Um, for example, um, yesterday we were talking about sleep and dreams, especially in, in the form of nightmares. We will talk about it again. Um, a lot of uh, physical manifestations, uh, manifestations of inadapted behavior, which is very common, panic attacks, of course, and um, avoidance. Um, a lot of health issues which are related to that, which uh, follow. Obviously, uh, we will be analyzing the energetics and we can understand very uh, clearly why uh, the whole energetic structure of the body is disrupted, specifically the immune system. Of course, psychiatric disorders and a lot of self-harm and tendency to suicide. Now, <coughs> the impact of stress or any kind of traumatic shock depends on two factors. It's not the same to everybody. First of all, uh, it's very important age. We are going to be defining how to deal with traumatic shocks related to age. And of course, on the personal um, strength, that means kidney jinx strength, and the shen, the heart, the strength of the heart. It's very important to note that these two will define how well we manage stress I use the word stress and shock because we will see that they are actually interchangeable. Something that might be stressful for me might be a shock for another person. Uh, for example, uh, we deal uh, commonly with people, of course, uh, we think of post-traumatic stress, uh, uh, people who have been in war, people who have been in catastrophes, uh, today, it's, uh, uh, you, you get up and go to a restaurant and uh, there is a bomb that blows up and people are killed around you and the survivors are in deep shock. Or uh, suddenly you hear of somebody's death that was unexpected. A mother losing a child, that is a shock. And, uh, uh, or, for example, sometimes things that we will not necessarily consider like shock, but you go to work and they say, sorry, we, uh, we don't want you anymore. Y you are obsolete, we don't need you anymore, don't come back on Monday. And this could be for some people a major shock. Somebody who had counted on working in a company for the rest of their lives finds themselves uh, jobless and especially it's a major <coughs> uh, shock to their self-esteem. So this also we have to deal with as a post-traumatic stress. So post-traumatic stress is not just being in a war zone or having been, uh, uh, or many women or, or even men to have been uh, sexually abused or whatever. It also could be on a daily basis, just life events. Now, we take them differently depending on our reasoning capacity. Um, for example, you lose your job, now, one thing, it could be a disaster for one person, and another person could say, great, I didn't like this job anyway. It means that I'm going to find a better job, a better situation. Uh, loss of a relationship. For some people, it's catastrophic. There are people who commit suicide because somebody left them. And for other people, okay, <laughs> life goes on, and I'm going to meet someone else. Um, I, uh, I always remember this story, uh, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Dr. Shen, a famous uh, Chinese doctor who lived in New York, he's dead now. He, he was very uh, um, strong in pulse taking. <laughs> uh, Leon Hammer, who's written that big book on pulses, he's a disciple of Dr. Shen. And Dr. Shen was capable of taking the pulse and reading a lot of information. 
And uh, this story was told by some of his students who were present. He was taking a pulse of someone. And he said, and his English was very bad. Huh? He said, oh, you're very sad. And he said, yeah, why so sad? Ah, oh, my girlfriend has left me. So why sad? She leave you because she no love you. Should be happy. <laughs> you see the reasoning? <laughs> Somebody leaves you because they don't love you. You should be rejoicing, not be sad. Yeah. Why do you want to be with someone who doesn't love you? You see, the reasoning is totally logical. And this is our perspective of things. So we see that actually, although we talk about PTSD, which is the most uh, um, current condition, psych psychological, psychiatric condition, uh, especially they're doing a lot of work with uh, war uh, survivors or even soldiers. You know, a lot of soldiers, American soldiers who have come back from Afghanistan, from Iraq, they have done such horrors and they are feeling bad about it. For them, it's a major trauma and they have to be treated because they cannot readapt into society. Now, what we are going to analyze, first of all, how our mind works in Chinese medicine and what are the levels where a trauma might affect us. So I, this is, of course, not Chinese. It is Western division, conscious, subconscious, unconscious. For, um, I apologize to psychiatrists, if there are any, any psychiatrists, psychologists. There is a big debate about subconscious and unconscious. Um, I think it's always a thing b between Jungian and, and no other uh, tendencies. They, Subconscious is considered the part of unconscious which is closer to the conscious. For some people, all of whatever is not conscious is unconscious. So these are little debates I don't want to get into. It's uh, not my domain. Um, now, the management, basically, of any kind of trauma, first of all, for us, it's important to uh, um, ascertain what age did it occur. Now, before the age of five, they have, uh, scientists have discovered that the limbic system in small children is yet not developed. I remind you, the limbic system is the area of memory. This is where we memorize events. As it's not developed in small children, they will not necessarily have a conscious memory of what occurred. They might have little glimpses. All of us, we have little memories of uh, events that took place before the age of five. Uh, but again, is it our memory or is it what we have heard? Because uh, if we parents have mentioned many times, for example, ah, you were four and you did this and that, slowly, slowly, this becomes my memory. I even start seeing it seeing colors and events that go around it without having, they have done tests. They have shown pictures of people saying, you remember when you were three years old, uh, you were by the sea playing and this and that, and people believe it. And they <coughs> integrate it as their own memory. So before the age of five, roughly, we consider that we will not be using exactly the same um, process on uh, people to release what we call these uh, traumatic stress memories. Now, the, to release the retained emotion, let's call it emotion, or energy mass, we are going to be discussing it, we have to first find which level it is trapped. And this brings us to understanding how we are, are psychological and physical system is organized to defend against external aggression. Then in order to release an event, it has to be brought into consciousness and conscious mind. Now obviously this is only valid for uh, trauma which is somewhere in the memory. Uh, in this case of a small child, we will not be able to bring it into the conscious mind because it, there is no uh, clear picture of it. We'll be looking at this. 
and then restructuring the belief system. This is the most difficult part, and it does not only involve post-traumatic stress disorder. I believe this also involves any kind of belief system which becomes harmful. Just a simple example. You go for a checkup to the doctor and he announces to you that you have cancer. That's a shock. How do we deal with that? Now, I have treated many cancer patients. And I have started to see a little bit a pattern of those who are going to heal and those who are going to have a relapse. And uh, the, the difference between the two is the belief system. How deeply do I believe that cancer is a terminal disease? Statistics today say 50% of cancer patients survive. That's a great percentage. When I did medicine, we didn't have 50%. We had maybe 20% surviving to five years. So cancer ter therapy has improved. Now, the question is when they say 50%, which 50% do you see yourself in? Are you in the healing group or in the one which is condemned? This is very important. It's a shock. How do we digest this? What do we do with it? To the mind is our biggest enemy. This is, has to be remind, remembered. It's our biggest ally, but it's also our biggest enemy. And this is where the cultivation of the mind, which is indicated by the Taoist, and even uh, in the Buddhist teachings, they always bring it back that it's our misconceptions <coughs> which are our biggest suffering in this world. And of course, the cause of disease, and at the same time, the source of our healing. Uh, yes, we have a lot of healing methods to offer a patient. For cancer, we have, of course, surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, God knows what. But is it? that which is healing us. Why is it two patients? They get the same treatment, one heals and the other one does metastasis in uh, two years and dies. For all the people working with this, it's obvious, it's evident that this is the key. This is why uh, it will be presumptuous of me to say, okay, in three hours I'm gonna give you some recipes, you go out there, put the needles in and people with PTSD are cured. Now, are they capable of changing their belief systems? And do we have the means to bring that? It's not, don't say to people, change your mind. If they could, they would have done it. We have to create the situation in order to do that.